Okay, everyone, and welcome to the Talk of the Town with me, Lynn, about town. Here we are broadcasting live from WTAN Studio, 1340 AM, 106.1 FM, Clearwater, Florida. Welcome, everyone. We are live on the radio for those of you who have uh, welcomed me into your drive time, driving home, sitting in traffic, perhaps coming home from Tampa, coming back to Clearwater or wherever you are. Thank you for tuning in. It's uh, my pleasure to do this show every week. We try to bring a mix of good guys and good news, new businesses, interesting businesses, things that should be known about that maybe you wouldn't in the busy day that you have be able to uh, have brought to you. So we're here to do that. Today I have a special guest. He's going to be calling in the moment he is uh, in his seat on an airplane. Uh, when I hear that phone ring, I'll know it's him. Uh, his name is Michael DeLeon. He is uh, an incredible guy. His story is remarkable, like remarkable. Um, that he is alive and able to tell you the story is truly remarkable. Uh, it was not a pleasant story. It, it had a lot of uh, bad bumps in the road and incarceration and drug abuse and a lot of irresponsibility. I'm saying things that I know he himself would tell you, uh, but he turned it all around. He turned it around to the point where uh, I've been following him on Facebook lately. He is traveling all over the country. He's actually, that's probably him. I'm going to be putting my headset on to talk to him. Anna, um, I know we have a, a short time. So, so tell me about your adventure across the country because the last time I saw you, I'm pretty sure you guys like went on a plane the next day. I'm holding, a, I'm holding a picture up of when we did our uh, our talk of the town with you and Randy Grimes and Jim Eskimin, and uh, we talked about you know what all of you guys are doing in the arena of keeping kids off of drugs and and helping with uh, rehab, et cetera. But I did not know about your adventure going across the country. So how did it start? And and let's make sure people follow you because I think if they hear about what you're doing and why you're doing it they'll they'll find you on facebook we'll put the information out and they can keep track of you in real time right steered straight s-t-e-e-r-e-d steered straight so it's a nonprofit organization and i'm the number one distributor of drug-free world materials in the world um that's my uh, drug-free education arm of my overall nonprofit. i'm trying to get children to understand the importance of prolonging putting off experimentation with drugs. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a realist, and I, I know that some kids are going to drink alcohol, um, smoke weed, smoke cigarettes, vape. Uh, but my goal is to get as many of them as possible to not even touch it until they're in their 20s. Um, I'd like them to never do cigarettes, never smoke weed, never vape. Um, and if they drink alcohol as an adult and have a, no problem with it, I don't have an opinion. But... I don't want kids doing anything. So that's my goal. And I'm the number one book school presenter in the country. So I did 616 schools last year. That's incredible. Very well done, by yeah. the way. I just, you know, from my heart to yours, I... You know, I do my best. I'm kind of like an octopus trying my hand and helping breast cancer and helping this and helping that, but that you are able to devote, and I know it is tiring, and I know it is selfless, um, but, you know, tell everyone a little bit about why you're so passionate, other than the fact that you love kids and you, you know, you, you saw the light in terms of drugs. Uh, you know, what really fuels you? Well, I mean, uh, these... I don't want these kids to grow up to be me. I did 12 years in prison as a result of a long-term drug addiction, and um, I don't want them to travel the path that I traveled. So I'm a documentary filmmaker. Marijuana X is one of the films that you were you know, talking about. Um, I want to bring truth to people. But, you know, I, I just think there's such an indifference to kids among legislators, among parents, to be quite honest, uh, among um uh, local officials, state officials. I know that I have to get the truth to kids. I've got to get them uh, convinced that they um, there's better ways to cope with their anxiety. There's better ways to cope with their depression, their trauma. Um, because of the choices and the decisions that I made in my life, you know, I have uh, the consequences that came my way, which is incarceration. And uh, I don't want these kids to grow up to be me. So I'm so passionate about it, and I'm doing everything I can in my power 
to get uh, the truth out to kids and recruit them into, uh, you know, the idea that they can prolong this stuff, they can put it off, they don't have to experiment with this, these things as an adolescent. And then the, I, I believe that if I put if I put drug experimentation off until 21, mm-hmm. I could eliminate 50% of addiction in America. That's a br- so You know, I I've never think- heard that as a goal before. I've never heard anyone actually say that, and I think that's brilliant because we know the brain develops, you know, we know 25. that The, the, the rental car companies knew that a long time ago. <laughs> they don't rent you a right. car until you're 25 uh, legally because... You're, you're, you're making risky decisions, you're doing things, that, you know, et cetera. So anyway, very well done on that goal. I hear your uh, flight attendant telling you you're getting ready to take off. Um, right, and i tell you, you know, real quick, 18, um, 15 to 27, right, that age demographic, 15 to 27, drugs are the number one cause of death. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. Accidents is number one, and 90% of accidents are drug and alcohol related. Uh, suicide is number two. Homicide is number three, and overdose is number four. So the top four causes of death for 15 to 27 is, is drugs. So yeah. we're losing an entire generation of kids. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything more important at yeah. all. So no. I'm, I'm going to, I spoke in 49 states. I needed one last state to make it 50. And three weeks ago, I spent seven days in Maui. I had eight schools and two prisons. So I've now spoken all, all 50 states. And now Maui's Bravo. calling, all the other islands are calling, wanting me to go back in January.